after Jesus has returned. His thousand year reign will begin, with the building, of the temple of God. This unique temple, was described by the prophet, Ezekiel, in chapter 41. And it will be from here, that Christ the King, will rule all nations. And all the nations, will come to this temple, to worship the King, of kings, and the Lord, of lords. The Word of God, made flesh, the Messiah. Isaiah, 2, verse 2. In the last days, the mountain, of the house of the Lord, will be, established, as the chief of the mountains, and will be raised above, the hills, and all the nations will stream to it, and many peoples, will come and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house, of the God, of Jacob, that he may teach us concerning, his ways, and that we may walk, in his paths, for the law, will go forth from Zion, and the word of the Lord, from Jerusalem, and he will judge, between the nations, and will render decisions, Isaiah 9, verse 6, for unto us, a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government, shall be upon his shoulder, and his name, shall be called, Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be, no end. When Christ reigns a thousand years in Jerusalem, next to the temple is a building called the King's Palace, or the King's House. Now in this 3D rendering, that height is probably closer to the height of the temple. Okay, so picture there a building about the height of the temple with four corners, and this is the Lord Jesus Christ, his his uh, palace. So you have the temple, and next to the temple is the king's palace. And what we're suggesting is that through the ancients and in the, in the architecture of the ancients, we may have actually have evidence of this through Darius the Great, because he built a similar structure, and we're overlaying it here over the area, calling it the king's palace. So, David got the architectural designs of the king's palace, okay, gave it to Solomon. Solomon built it. Of course, it was destroyed, so we don't know exactly, but it's possible that the ancients copied Solomon. And we have other videos on the king's palace, guys, where we've discussed this building and how the uh, supportive evidence suggests this, okay? But this is um, called showing the design and measuring the pattern of the millennial temple to show us the message, okay? The message is New Jerusalem, okay? But before New Jerusalem is the millennium. In the millennium, there's a temple, and in the temple, there's the king's palace. So it's, it's a building with four towers, and it's full of pillars. And what you would do is you would enter this to see the throne of the king. Now, David got this design, and he said, For the palace is not for man, but is for Yahweh Elohim. So he's saying that the Messiah is Yahweh Elohim. He is, he is the Most High. And the palace and the design that David got was for him when he will reign in the millennium. And many people have seen this palace in the heavenly realms. Here's a seven-year-old girl, and she did a painting of what she saw in heaven, when she was taken to heaven, and she saw the king's palace. Okay, so it's a big white building with four towers, 
in the corners. You can see that looks very similar to what we're showing you. And what we're suggesting is that when uh, the ancients saw what Psalm built, it's impressed upon them so much that Darius most likely built something similar. And this was in a place called Shushan. And here you can see the tomb of prophet Daniel in Shushan or Susa. Okay, now I don't know if this is exactly his tomb or anything like that, but we do know Daniel was there. We do know the entire book of Esther was in this location, Susa. Okay, it's just to the east of the um, Tigris River, okay, in the Persian Gulf in modern day Iran. And we know where this place is. We have the archaeological uh, foundations of the palace at Shusa, the whole complex that Darius the Great built. So the entire book of Esther was at this place, not only at this place, at this specific building, okay? Not only that, Daniel chapter 8, his um, prophecy in Daniel chapter 8, this is where he was, guys. He was in the palace at Shushan, okay? So the kings of Persia may actually give us insight into Christ's millennial temple, in the palace at Shushan. Now in Esther chapter one, we get a, a glimpse of the court of the garden of the king's palace. So Esther chapter one, we see the palace at Shushan. Okay, now Shushan is uh, the Arabic for Susa. So that same place, we know where it is. We showed you the, pl the place. That's where you, it means lily. That's where the name Susan comes from. Shushan, Susa. It's all the same thing, okay? So that's being described in the uh, king's palace. And there's a, a detail here that we can find in the millennial king's house, okay? So um, you can see in all these videos, I have these banners Okay, we have these banners, we show these to you because we're depicting to you the palace of the king's house, okay? So uh, when it, it, it talks about the feast and it says, in the court of the garden of the king's palace. So there's a court of the garden and there's a space, okay? And in that space it says there were white, there were green and blue hangings fastened with cords of fine linen, purple and silver rings. So you notice in, the, in all the videos, I have all these hangings and the one up above me is purple. Because what we're doing is we're depicting this space uh, with silver rings, pillars of marble. Okay, so you see this space, it has all these hangings. Okay, it has pillars and it has benches. Okay, uh, couches. Um, the beds were of gold and silver upon a pavement of red, blue, white, and black. Okay, so uh, this is the mosaic, the tessera that's on the floor. Okay, and this is also in Ezekiel's temple. In the, in the area of the outer court, um, you could view it also as the inner court. That's where this is. The king's house is in the inner court. There are tessera. There are mosaics that Ezekiel describes, okay? So this is what we have. We have hangings, we have pillars, we have beds, and we have mosaics, okay? And so this is in this space around the king's house. And then what it says, it says the drinking was according to the law and they gave them vessels of gold, vessels being diverse, one from another, the royal wine in abundance, according to the decree of the king. So this is the communion imagine this this is the actual communion that christ talked about he says i will not drink again until i drink with you in the kingdom so this is actual communion in the king's house okay in the wedding supper wow um and the drinking was according to the law none did compel and the king had appointed officers to his house okay so this whole thing that we're seeing in Esther chapter 1 is the millennial king's house. And it's giving us information about the area called the garden of the court around the king's house. So the area we just looked at is this space here. You can see there's, a, there's the building here. This is the building. These are the four towers. And then there's a space and then there's a wall. This is the wall, 
and this here is the space that is running between the building and the wall and you can see what we've done is we've drawn pillars um, in that space so this is an open space it uh, could be a porch that has a roof but most likely it's not most likely it's a open space because it's the palace of the sheep so if you read in john chapter 10 you'll see the sheepfold but in greek that's the sheep palace and you would have the building the ancients they would have a building and then they would bring the livestock into a space into a walled space at night for protection okay so that's the palace the alleyway in the greek um or alleyway, and the sheep palace so there's that space okay around the house so uh, what we're showing you here is that um, that's that space the court of the king's garden we have the pillars we would have the hangings and we have the mosaics in this space here now what this would look like from the side view is we would have towers like this now we don't know the actual height guys so we're just showing that as a matter of example now where is this in relation to Ezekiel's temple so in Ezekiel's temple we take this space here and we find it right here, right next to the temple. So in the temple, this is the inner court. This is the porch. This is the temple. Okay. This is the Holy of Holies. This is the building of the temple around the temple. And then there's a space, a walkway around the building and then these two buildings here which we've shown you before so um, behind that is the king's house the king's palace okay and we have uh, many uh, proof through the scriptures of this evidence of this because the book of Ezekiel basically gives us the dimensions of 70 cubits and then this space here and then the wall of five cubits uh, it doesn't actually say the height, and it doesn't actually say these four uh, towers, okay? It doesn't say that. We're suggesting that based on um, other information and evidence that we can find in the book of Esther about this place. So we can see um, also within the inner court area and structure mosaics. And those mosaics we also know to be in the outer court area as well. So now what we have is this is the temple complex. These are the uh, 30 buildings. These are the gates. Here is the temple. These are the uh, north and south chambers. And then behind that we have the king's house. So this is what the whole complex looks like. And what we're suggesting is that this uh, king's house or the building Okay, gives us important insight as we study this and compare it to New Jerusalem. So that wall is five cubits, and the five cubits represent the five wise virgins. And in New Jerusalem, the wall is 144 cubits. So thus we consider that the wall and the representation of the wall in the king's house of five cubits correlates perfectly with the 144 cubit wall in New Jerusalem because it sets at 144 cubits representing the 144,000 and that is the wall of New Jerusalem. So that wall is right here in this area around the king's house okay but we also have a representation of that wall of New Jerusalem in the temple complex of Ezekiel's temple. So for example you can see this green line that we're drawing around the temple complex area and that's uh, a wall of six cubits so that's the measurement of six cubits now the wall of um, new jerusalem as we saw is 144 cubits and what it says in revelation it says this is the number of man which is the number six which is angel angel representing 24 so six times 24 is 144 so the number of man okay or six reeds is the wall okay that's the wall in Ezekiel's temple now the space between that wall and the inner court 
is 144 cubits in Ezekiel's temple. Let me just say that again. So the wall here is six cubits. From the outside of that wall to the inner court is 150 cubits. But if you subtract six from 150, it's 144. So just like there's 144 cubits in New Jerusalem, there's 144 cubits in this space here in Ezekiel's temple. So guys, Ezekiel's temple is a smaller version of New Jerusalem, okay? And one major aspect of that is this king's house, because this king's house does also represent New Jerusalem, okay? So again, we can see that we have this city, we have this king's house, and then we have a wall around it. Now, New Jerusalem has, um, you know, the city, and then it has a wall, 144 cubits, okay? And that, you know, doesn't give us all the measurements of everything that's going on, but this is, of course, in New Jerusalem, it's going many miles, um, you know, huge, okay? So there's different details in Ezekiel that shows us what is a small version of what New Jerusalem is going to, New Jerusalem is going to be very large. We find an interesting word in Greek in the building of the wall. And it means endomesis in the, in the Greek, and it's a housing, it's a structure or building of the wall of New Jerusalem. Now, this word is very interesting because, again, we find the same language with Ezekiel's temple in Ezekiel chapter 40 and verse 5, where, behold, the wall outside the house and round about and outside a man's head, man's a man's hand, his measuring reed was six cubits long by reed and a hand breadth. And he measured the breadth of the building, one reed, and the height, one reed. Okay, so this is a type and shadow in Ezekiel's temple of New Jerusalem because we have this same building or structure of the wall and the measurements. So what have we learned? We have learned that there's something called the king's house, the king's palace, if you were. And that's what we believe in Ezekiel's temple is called this building. We find similar um, depictions of the king's palace in the book of Esther, where we can actually see the palace at Shushan. And this is the temple complex. And if we look at that, we can find similar proportions and design elements with that of Ezekiel's temple. So there you see Shushan the palace and you can see how it is filled with pillars and you see the four towers and you see the layout has similar design elements that we can see of this building in Ezekiel chapter 41 in the millennial temple. Amazing. So the book of Esther provides this insight that when Esther was in Shushan, in Elam, the province, and Daniel was there in Shushan, in this actual building. It is a type and shadow of what the king's house, or the Lord Jesus Christ, his millennial temple is one building, but then he has a house, he has a palace, okay? And that's what we can see in Ezekiel chapter 41. And this is uh, something that is a, a mystery, but we can see this. Now, I really encourage you guys, we have talked a little bit about the king's house in this building in previous videos. We have other videos. We'll put links in the description field. This is also called the Palace of the Sheep. And um, we have other uh, videos on the Palace of the Sheep. We talked about this in Hanukkah. And this is part of our series of videos on the kings and priests in the Millennial Temple. Okay and the house of David and the patterns of measuring the temple and the king's house. So this is the king's house. So I'll have links in the description field for these videos. You can see we have many videos where we discuss this. And this is very, very exciting times as we find more and more insight into Christ and his rulership in the millennium. Okay, we can find that by the four kings of Persia. So guys, thanks for watching. And God bless you, and please watch the videos in the links in the description field.